And with, with regards to sort of Paradise Lost, can you can you tell us a little bit about it? What what is the story about? Um, well, Paradise Lost was the the Lord of the Rings of the the 1600s. Uh, it was um, yeah, it's the story of how God's number one angel Lucifer um, becomes vain and proud and decides to rebel against God and leads a war against God in heaven and is sort of thrown down to to hell and uh, and decides to take his revenge on God by uh, corrupting Adam and Eve. So it's kind of the 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 first few chapters of the biblical book of Genesis merged in with a bunch of supernatural battles. Uh, so, uh, you know, sort of there's, there's bits of Avatar and 300, I guess, and all those things in there uh, as, as a modern movie audience would see. But uh, from our perspective, it was just a case of taking the poem and trying to come up with the most pleasing structure um, and the most cinematic way of rendering it. Um, there's so many different ways that you could interpret heaven and hell and, and the Garden of Eden and, and Milton's ideas. And we've just picked the way that seems the best to us um, because the technology is finally available to do that. I think Lord of the Rings and Avatar couldn't be made until the time that they were made. And, and we finally feel like the, the, the filmmaking technology is there with performance capture and 3D, et cetera, to, to make Paradise Lost for the first time in a big epic canvas. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's going to work well. We, we're shooting in January, I think, in Sydney. Alex Proyas is directing. Bradley Cooper starring as Lucifer slash Satan, um, and the film's going to be in post for a very long time. But I think late 2013 is when it's supposed to come out. The the it's Milton's poem, as as you said. It, it was originally written in New Modern English, which when you read it, doesn't feel very modern. So how have you um, really translated the the, the the, the poem did you did you translate it yourself or did you refer to other translations of the poem to, to make an adapter screenplay well if we did a straight translation of uh, Milton's language onto screen and all the dialogue was spoken that way I think it would be quite inaccessible for most audiences at the same time uh, you don't want angels high-fiving each other and using modern urban slang so you have to find uh, you have to pitch your tent somewhere in between those those poles there are definitely uh, sections of Milton's text and crucial lines that uh, have sort of gone down in literary history uh, and that work for the plot uh, and that we all felt needed to be in the movie. So those things have gone in verbatim and then it's kind of trying to marinate the rest of the dialogue in a in a sort of a more courtly old world language, I guess similar to the kind of patterns of speech you would have had in Lord of the Rings, that doesn't feel like it's entirely disjointed from Milton's language, um, maybe a little closer to modern. Um, it just takes a lot of uh, massaging the language to a point where it all feels like it belongs together. And it's no easy feat and it's taken a number of drafts to do that, but I feel like we're in a fairly good good place with the language. And, and, and as you said, it, it's really driven from sort of the perspective of, of Satan, Strokes or Lucifer. It, it, there's so many sort of depths of, um, and complexities to the, the part. For you as a writer, for an actor, obviously, it's, it's a great part to play and get your teeth into. But for, a, for you as a writer, has that been, has that been great to, just, to sort of explore? Well, it was great to write all those characters. I mean, it was nice to be sort of God, Satan, Adam, Eve. You know, they're, they're the rather big characters to write. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, Satan probably is the richest character in it and you're you're following a tragic arc of someone who is slowly reducing themselves by the choices that they're making all the while pers persuading themselves that they're actually uh, evolving as as a person um, but they're actually devolving so so that's uh, always interesting and and you know it's a very hammy role satan's very melodramatic sort of character and gets hammier as he goes through the film um, but we've also got other characters in there the character of the archangel michael is sort of um, starts out as a kind of a brother figure to uh, to Lucifer and ends up sort of being his chief nemesis and the, the captain of the heavenly host. So um, there's him, there's Gabriel, there's Adam and Eve, and um, you know, figuring out how to represent God as a character, both visually and in dialogue has been a, a challenge as well. Um, but hopefully people will respond to, to the way we've rendered all these classic characters. And I think with, with poetry, what I, I've, I've sort of personally experienced is each word has a meaning and it's, it's there for a specific reason. And I wonder whether you, script writing is, is on a parallel with that because everything that you write with the dialogue has a meaning and how it either explains a character or how it takes a story forward. Would you say that? 
Yeah, I think you're responsible for every word in, in a script and, and scripts are kind of like haiku poetry. You know, you have to be able to say in 10 words what a novelist would say in 30. Uh, so, so you have to really pass the language out carefully and you don't have a lot of words to waste because you have a, a page count and when you're making a big movie like Paradise Lost, each page of a script is budgeted out at about a million dollars or something so you, you just have to be very careful and so when someone says cut pages they're really saying cut five million dollars so you know that's a that's a general a general statement but there, there's there's some truth in that so the closer you get to production the more responsible you are for um, not only making the story work on its own terms, but making the story function for the financiers and for the director and the actors and all the other production departments. So, so you're really sort of providing blueprints for everyone to work off the film. When you start and you're doing first draft, it's just you. You can do anything you like. Um, but by the time you're in pre-production, you've got production designers and assistant directors all coming in saying that they need a particular set of pages on a particular time, marked up in a particular way with particular kinds of stage directions. Um, and so it becomes quite technical. But that's, that's important. That the, you have to trust that the art is still in there, but you have to make it more and more technical because it's, it's, it's an architect's blueprint for, for building a building or making a film. And, and finally, so you can relax. Um, what, what's the magic of filmmaking for you, Stuart? Um, well, I remember reading a quote by Harrison Ford once where he said, cinema is emotional exercise. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's why I go. I go to, I go to the, the cinema like I go to the gym to get a workout for my emotions in a sort of a safe, dark space. You know, I, I go to a comedy because I want to laugh and a horror because I want to be scared, but I don't want to be scared by having an ax in my head. I want to see someone else get an ax in their head. Um, and come out and feel glad that it wasn't me who got an axe in my head. So, you know, that's what cinema does, and it does it in a very powerful way because it tricks us if it's doing its job. It tricks us into believing that what we've seen is reality, and then the movie ends and suddenly real reality bleeds back in, and, and we, we sort of have to come out blinking into the real world again. Um, and that's, that, that's just the power, most powerful thing about film is it's so immersive because it has every armament in the creative arsenal at its uh, disposal. It's got photography, it's got music, it's got uh, performance and, and writing. Uh, and that's why I think filmmaking is so so much fun because it's a combination of all those art forms. And I like all those those art forms uh, separately, but it's a chance, especially when you're directing, to, to do a bit of everything and bring it all together as a film. So and I think when, when, you, when you get it right, when you, you make a Godfather or a Star Wars, um, you know, there aren't many feelings in the creative world that can rival that. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed.